this is Sam Medrick reporting for the St. Cloud Christian School News. Today we have a special guest that will teach us a lot about World War I. His name is Frank Buckles and he is actually the last surviving veteran of World War I. Hello Frank, how are you today? Oh, I'm feeling mighty fine for someone who's 107 years old. Whoa! So exactly where and when were you born? I was born in Bethany, Missouri, 1901. Wow, is it true that you were the last surviving veteran of World War I? Yes, but I sort of cheated. You see, I was only 16 when the United States got involved. When the Army recruiter asked to see my birth certificate, I told him the state didn't give out birth certificates at the time I was born, so they took me. So after you were accepted, where did you serve? In 1917, I was shipped over to France on the RMS Carpathia. The Carpathia? Haven't I heard of that ship before? Yeah, that was a ship that rescued the survivors of the Titanic in 1912. Oh yeah, now I remember. Now where was I? Oh yeah, in France I was stationed at the Fort Riley for the U.S. Army. There I drove ambul ambulances and motorcycles. So were you involved in any trench warfare? No, I didn't fight in any battles, but I helped out wherever I could. Then what did you do after the armistice? After the war, I escorted prisoners back to Germany. What do you remember most about the war? I remember all the terrible suffering they were feeling. They were away from their families and friends, and most of them were sick or hurt. I never had to live in a trench, but they looked filthy. Most men had to sleep on the muddy ground. That sounds awful. It was. What kind of sicknesses did men suffer from? Most men had minor colds, but the biggest killer was influenza. Influenza didn't only kill soldiers, but many, many civilians. The influenza outbreak of 1918-1919 killed more people than the World War I itself. It killed about 30 million people throughout Europe and America. Man, now I'm really glad I got my flu shot. Was there a way to prevent influenza back then? Not really. Men wore masks that covered their noses and mouths. Wow, I've learned so much since I've met you. Could you teach me about some of the weapons men used during the war? Well, Sam, most of the weapons of World War I were new at the time. Machine guns were first used in World War I. A machine gun could fire 400 to 600 small calibers a minute. It took four to six men to operate a machine gun. Harry, why do you look so puzzled? Well, I've been thinking. A machine gun sounds like it makes a lot of noise. Was there a no way for an army to attack silently? Yes, actually, there was. In 1914, the Germans introduced poison gas. One of these deadly gases was called mustard gas. Mustard gas burns your skin and suffocates you. It was odorless and invisible, so it was hard for men to prepare for it. 
to protect themselves, men wore masks that covered their whole heads. Wow, that must have been uncomfortable. Not only was it uncomfortable, but the masks were clumsy. Man, that's a lot of weapons. Was there a way for men to drive places safely? Yes, they did. In World War I, men started using airplanes and tanks. Tanks were first used in 1916. They were heavily armored with powerful guns. A tank could roll right over a trench in its way. Airplanes were not as heavily armored as tanks, but they carried machine guns, which made them deadly. Gosh, you know a lot about World War I. I had a great time speaking to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. So long, St. Cloud Christian School, and, to, and don't forget to tune in next time as we interview the great Alex Ovechkin. The real Frank Buckles was on, honored last year by President Bush in the White House and will be turning 108 next month. Now where was I? Oh yeah, in France I was... It takes, it took... It takes, it took, it, yes, actually, there was.